Yeah. All right, how about we'll uh, call our meeting to order. Um, first uh, item is uh, approval or corrections or additions to the minutes of uh, following meetings. Special commission meeting held on August 14, 2019. We do have a revised um, meeting minutes. So would somebody like to make a motion? I'll make a motion to approve those minutes. I uh, second that um, correction. Okay, all in agreement, please say aye. Aye. Okay, the next one is regular commission meeting held on August 14, 2019. Motion to approve. Okay, second. Rick made the motion, Joe second. Please say aye if you approve. Aye. Okay, motion carried. Um, Action items, travel requests, Rockwell Automation Fair. Is this an annual thing? Is this an annual thing? <laughs> McCormick uh, um, Center? It, it, it is an annual thing, but they usually rotate between Milwaukee and Chicago. And this oh, year okay. it's in Chicago. Okay. Yep. I've gone in the past, it's a really yeah. good. Um, they see all their new technology. They have all these exhibits set up. So I'm, um, you know, have, having Tyler would like Tyler to go this year. Is this the Rockwell that's um, the quarter in Milwaukee? So it Rockwell started out as Alan Bradley in Milwaukee, and then Alan Bradley acquired, well, Rockwell acquired Alan Bradley, yeah. but some of their headquarters is still in Milwaukee, and then some of it's in Illinois. Nice. I make a motion to approve that training request for Tyler. No second. Okay, Rick made the motion. Joe second. Any other uh, comments? If not, on agreement, please say aye. Aye. Okay, request to reallocate uh, our reallocation of budget funds. Uh, <clears throat> this one here, we actually have a dead end on our little one lane, which every year is an issue with freezing. Um, in the past, we've had uh, states in here customers on the water during winter months to try and keep that from freezing. Um, it's something that we need to move forward with because we're getting less people who want to do that, obviously, during winter time, summer, leave for winter, and so forth. So, we're asking to take funds from one account that we're not going to do anything with this year to put this um, go off it down the river where they have to take care of that problem. Um, and we can replenish that account for 2020. We'll be doing that for this year. Um, the engineering portion would be six thousand dollars. <coughs> uh, the blow-off machine that um, they're talking about, if the DNR approves it, it's right around four grand. And then the cost of us to put it in is another five grand for our crews to install it. So asking to take fifteen thousand use that for this project if possible. How much do you have in your fund? Is it uh, I had 25000 budget mm -hmm. for the fund that we're thinking about taking it out for a while five. Okay. Why aren't we spending the money on well five? That or was for a study on the water trying to figure oh. out what we have to do to Get it back up and running if possible. Okay. And that's one of the considerations for 2020 potentially. Like like Dale mentioned, so we kind of look at that project again in 2020 as a potential capital project. Okay. Mr. So I'd like to make a motion. I'll make a motion to approve that at point. Okay. I'll second that. <coughs> Any other discussion? Um, if not, on agreement, please say aye. Aye. Okay, training and request, APPA and Customer Connections Conference. And I believe that's Lynn. Correct. It's an annual APPA event. The Customer Connections Conference generally attended by Customer service folks yep. from across the country. So I think she attached an agenda as well. Yep. Uh, 
How to make a motion to approve that request? I'll second. Any other discussion, comments? If not, all in agreement, please say aye. 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 Okay, thank you. All right, department updates. Safety committee. I noticed you, in your notes you talked about um, in new business. Um, uh, the committee reviewed the respirator protection program and found that was no that no changes were needed at this time. Um, we generally don't wear respirators in any line of our work, do we? Not typically. The respirator is for an emergency situation. If you had a or you had to get out of somewhere. You, Okay. Would that be like, let's say, line crews had to go into an underground or water people? You guys don't go in the underground? All that, all line. It's only for the above ground. Now. It's just the water crew. Just the water crews. Water crew. Okay. Chlorine. Okay. And this is this is a this is an actual respirator and not a uh, dust mask or anything. And it's got a special canisters for okay. a particular hazardous environment that they be going into. It. Air filtration. So, is part of the uh, uh, protection program. Uh, well, I don't know what Sean passed. Or is he clean shaven enough? Do you have to be clean shaven. And there's we we actually have fit testing. We have annual fit testing okay. that the guys will go through, which they usually love doing. Um, we stop doing it around the winter months because you get a lot more facial hair in the winter months. Yeah. Um, the, because of the, the, the type of respirators they're using, you have to make sure you have a nice tight seal. So yeah, we have fit testing every year. They're emergency use only, so yep. I don't think anybody can confirm that. I don't think anybody's ever actually had to use one before. Not yet. Yeah, not kind of wood. It's, it's kind of like teaching guys CPR. You, you teach them to make sure they know, but you hope that they'll never ever yeah. have to use it. Same thing with respirators. They're good to have emergency use only, but because we have that, we have to have training, we have to have fit testing, we have to have a program in place. So all the employees in the water department, I imagine just in the water plant? Yes. No? No. All, all water employees, they have to, do they have their own particular respirators? And those get inspected now monthly as well. Okay. So. Any other questions, comments? If not, the line superintendent report. <coughs> so no squirrels last month? Last, I thought we had a squirrel last month. Did we not? Last month there could have been, in August there wasn't. Okay. Yeah, I noticed that too. And what happened to the rodents? <laughs> well, coming. no, I thought there was one yeah, that... They're, uh, coming. They're, they're coming back. <laughs> yeah, I know I put four pins in this just in the last three days. So yeah. <laughs> this time of year, they're building nests, they're yeah. getting ready for the winter, and yeah, you're going to have them. Next month, they'll, they'll be back on. <laughs> I'll go forward to. In the Beeren project, are you moving along uh, a certain put lines, or does anybody understand what's going on in Beeren yet? Yeah, they've closed on three lots, I believe. One's going to start in September on the foundation. So, yeah, we have, uh, I don't know, three or four thousand feet of wire to get in by then. Oh. oh. Okay, anything else? <clears throat> Any questions? How about the water department operation? Thanks for the feedback on uh, the Rosewood oh, sure. issue. So I'll, I'll, I'll relay that to the customer. All right. Is that a, is that a, you know, I mean, if you're recommending a six inch and uh, the developer can put in whatever they want there. That's kind of like an engineering thing. They, yeah. They, Probably estimate what the growth is going to be in the neighborhood or whatever the size is the main right. potential. So, or you got to deal on eight inch, like yeah. more than more than likely. <laughs> <laughs> so, 
it's engineering thing. But it is up to them. It is up to the developer in terms of what. Pretty much. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, I just was thinking about this this morning. A collector well that you know, with two year periods, two or two different periods, we had to have them cleaned or serviced. When does that next guy have to happen? Do you like have to periodically go and see what kind of volume is coming through them? We did them back in 2011, 2013, I think was the last time. We were lucky to get by with 13 years, kind of roughly. So it's something, you know, future but not. Okay. Over. It's usually over time, silt builds up or something. Right, and iron bacteria and stuff yeah. like that builds up on the screen, so it's drifting the flow into the collector itself. So it's so that's probably a 10 to 13 year program. Yeah, we're going to probably, the way things are going right now, it's flowing just fine. So we kind of watch how your flows drop off over time and kind of give indicator how often you have to clean them. Right now, we're looking at probably 8 to 10 years. Okay. So. Good. Yeah. I remember that was very really expensive. It is. Um, anybody else have anything? And the uh, customer support supervisor report? <coughs> anybody give you any calls or have there been calls on the new water rates? Or? Not yet, but they're not going to go on the bills until October. When the October. bill comes up, uh, they'll... Then they'll find some costs. I'll see. Um, any other questions? Director of Finance report. Case update uh, it says the rate of return used to calculate our uh, water rate rates decreased from five, six to five point six, but increased from one five point one percent rate of return allowed. I guess I'm confused. So when we filed the initial rate case last August, um, the rate of return that the Public Service Commission was giving out was right around that five to five point one percent. So that's what we filed at. Um, which was less than our 6% authorized back in 2010. Uh, since that time, since that's tied to um, borrowing and treasuries, that rate increased um, when we went through the process. So it went from the 5.1 where we filed up to the 5.6%. Um, and it's just, yeah, it's tied. There's a, there's a certain percentage that you're entitled, to, that the floor is, and then the rest of it's based on, I believe it's 30 year treasuries. That was the only positive in our year-long water rate piece. Was that was the rates, when the rates were, were increasing? The right. The rates were yeah, increasing. Treasury so. rates were increasing, so then this kind of followed that time. And then okay. now as treasury rates are decreasing, I'm assuming that rate of return will be decreasing. Yeah. So you got to do them under the wire. We did. So. Hmm. Okay. And is the uh, claim of 386, is that... Did you get the check yet? We have not gotten the check yet. Um, this week we did get a um, kind of just like a, we had to sign the paperwork just to say, you know, validate that that was the claim and whatnot. So I think things are moving along pretty good. Um, we do have a $10,000 deductible, um, so that'll be t even taken off that. But I did have a meeting with uh, FEMA this morning, or kind of the initial FEMA discussions with that, and even that, that $10,000 deductible on our insurance is something we can claim uh, towards the FEMA expenses when we get there, so. But, you know. Any other questions? If not, Information Systems Administrator. I 
I saw it was you had all the cellular modems didn't work that you got for that. Oh. First two they sent me work fine, and then they sent me a new shipment of eight, which is what I need for the collectors out in the field. Because we're going to do eight this year. None of them work. Mm -hmm. They think they have it figured out now. They're supposed to let me know for sure by Friday if their fix works, and then we can do their update remotely so I don't have to send them back or anything. It could it just be bad modems? No, they're figuring it's a programming issue. Oh. So that's what they were trying to figure out. <clears throat> but they'll know for sure on Friday because if their new program works, then we can just upgrade all the modems and we'll be good. The only reason I said I know sometimes with cable TV, though they said they'll get a whole case of cable boxes, and none of them work. Right. And I'll probably have to slap everything together. Yeah. So. That's why I brought them in the mix. I was like, figure out your stuff. <laughs> yeah, you do it. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. Anybody else have a question? If not the conservation manager report. Uh, Riverview Hospital um, said they thought our voltage was varying too much for um, probably test equipment or whatever. Um, it, it could be the equipment that they were using in the facility, or it could be um, electrical equipment that they have past our service going in, mm -hmm. so somewhere inside the hospital. So. It eliminated by putting on that power voltage power monitoring system that that voltage was coming in low from us. So and it's not it, no, it was well within um, our range, our standard, um, which is plus or five, minus five percent voltage. We were, they were running about four to six low, and that's that is a good voltage that we were supplying to the hospital. Hey, Todd, don't, don't you usually, when you have like, either test equipment or very finicky equipment, that there's like constant voltage transformers or something? That... They, they could do a number of things on yeah. their side of it, too. Yeah. Um, a lot of times you have isolation transformers where it's basically the same voltage going in and, and the same voltage going out, but it, um, you know, it's, it actually makes the voltage, you know, more constant. Sure. Um, Back in the paper mill, we had all the instrumentation equipment had its had dedicated transformers just for that type of thing. Yeah. So I'm and sure they could do the same at the hospital. In, in the farm, well, that's the only, the only reason I know about this for a spectrometer. Mm -hmm. You know, our degree of testing usually is to come back in a pile of sand and join it at a wall. If it stuck, it was correct. <laughs> but uh, we had to put a constant voltage transformer for the uh, for the spectrometer because it was the only thing that could keep the equipment. Yeah, very, very common in industry, so I'm sure they could do the same for their equipment, too. Yeah. So I, I think their first step is always to say, well, maybe the utility has a problem, and our, you know, recorder said, no, we're, we're perfect yeah. where we are, where we're at. Anybody else? If not Director of Engineering and Electric Operations? Oh yeah, and don't forget Public Power Week, right? October 10th, yeah. Thursday. And we'll be here before that to remind you, I believe. Didn't you have a record crowd last week, or last year, I should say? We hit 400, and the previous year was 450, but that was perfect weather. Last yeah, year was yeah. 35 degrees and windy. Yeah. So, yeah. And with the bucket truck ride. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> do you know what the status just, of the? Sorry, do you know what the status of the Metalco? They broke ground. Didn't they? Yeah, I've been answering uh, quite a few questions from the PSC on that, but um, so we're still working through that process. But they broke ground um, probably at the end of July, okay. and they're going to town. So um, yeah, it's it's going well. Yeah. Now the the coin substation. 
is that is that a new substation? So that's the existing consolidated water power ATC substation off of 32nd Street. It's the one that's uh, about a mile away from 48th Street where the Metalco okay. um, plant is going. And that's the one I had worked with ATC with last year to get two bays for our equipment. So that's what, why that's all new equipment for us in this substation and that'll be the Metalco plant. Are we going to have two transformers there like we have on the other side? Uh, not in the beginning. That's why, if you remember when we ordered the transformer we ordered a few months ago, uh, we went with the more expensive Waukesha unit because yeah. of the reliability for it. Now, at some point, if our load continues to expand at, in that part of the city, which I think it will, it's just a matter of when, um, we'll have the future bay ready to go so that we'll have two transformers just like every other location. But in the in the beginning, no, just one transformer, Tom. All right. And what was going on? I know I think Rick just asked about the Baker substation. So Baker. No, Metalco. Yeah, he was. Oh, oh Metalco. Yeah. Okay. So Baker substation, that's the one off of Airport and around 36th Street. Um, again, we've had multiple meetings with ATC and. They're actually rebuilding their 115 kV line that goes from Saratoga to our Baker sub to the coin sub. And as part of that rebuild, they also want to install line breakers in the substation. Right now, they're just motorized switches um, and put their own dedicated control house in our substation. And at the same time, they want to put capacitor banks to keep voltage stabilization on their 115 kV line. So the um, substation physically is going to expand to double its size and that's all gonna take place over the next uh, two years. So the spring of 2021 is when it all should be in service. Uh, so that's gonna be probably the largest electrical budget line item in next year's budget okay. when we review it. So. I'll probably ask you this again for the oyster again. Yeah. yeah. I know it's fine. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, fine. Anything else? If not, the general manager report. Can you tell me what the Lido's long range power supply planning study is? <coughs> it just uh, took a look at what Blue's resources are and contracts in place and um, projected them forward and looked at different other types of power supply, whether they be contracts or different types of generation, to see what would make sense with our current portfolio and stuff. So they're just. In order to do it was looking. kind of a sanity check by a high price consultant just to make sure we were doing the right thing. What it wanted to do. And you're looking to go either like some type of solar expansion or motor generator to. Uh, First one to go will probably be the reciprocating engines, 35 megawatts, okay. and then the solar soon after that. I don't know that we're going to tap on both at the same time. I suppose you have to get a consulting engineer for both of them. Correct. Site. And where would placement be for the uh, reciprocating? That's yet to be determined. Once we have an engineer. An engineer. Yes. Oh. It's a big. What? It's a big generator. Yeah, it is. It's actually three of them. Yeah, I think it would be put in three different areas and glue this area or no, something. No, there would be in one spot. It would be a matter of one? Don't know that yet. I'm still working through the details. I mean, naturally, it's going to have to be a place where it never would have been in Rapids until this Metalco plant happened. But since they've expanded the gas main on the east side of the river, it's actually possible to, to host it here now as well. Um, where in the past, it never, we could never get enough gas to run a natural gas plant. So, mm -hmm. so all those things have to be worked out. Right now, we're just working on a purchase scenario for the engines themselves and how to get them here. Because they're sitting in a warehouse in Seattle right now. Oh. We've got so you're that far? One of the reasons we're doing this is because we're getting such a good deal on it. 
they were intended for somebody else, and then they backed out. And so we had a right of first refusal on the engines themselves, so we're working through the contract right now. Anybody have uh, any other comments? If not, I have one. Um, yes, sir. Um, I have some constituents that have a concern. Um, some of the street lights are on, and they're calling in, and they're saying they're, they're put on a list. And they're, right now, we're dealing with the storm and, and shoring up. I know at the when we had the storm, we did kind of a band-aid effect to keep, get electricity out. But it seems to me that some of those intersections are totally dark. And um, it seems to me that maybe those lights should be replaced and then work on the storm shoring it up. Because if electricity is out there now, um, but if, if someone goes through an intersection or walking across, they're going to get hit or potentially get hit. And I guess some of my constituents are worried about that. Yeah. I have one out, for example, on Witter and Garfield, totally dark, and you can't see anything. So um, just something to think about. So is this something that happened after the storm? There are lights that are out, or? or? No, we're just it getting just had. Of, <laughs> you're getting what? Just getting to a lot of the lights. I mean, we're still replacing poles that are cracked and stuff like that. So, so street lights typically aren't the highest priority. It's not the highest, but if you if you potentially have an accident, um, so it's something to think about. I understand you get so much. You have such a demand. But uh, if replacing some of them, maybe where it's real dark, I think would be advantageous. So, okay. So how many? How many are on that list? Oh, 90. 90. About how many? Ninety. Ninety. And I think there's some that are m more strategic, that are darker than others. I mean, some along the highway, you got other lights up there and so forth. But when it comes at a in the subdivisions where there are intersections and there's no light, that's a little bit different. So maybe out of the 90, there might be 30 or 40 in that situation versus and 40 maybe where there's more light. But um, something to think about, just... We'll relook at the list and see if we can't prioritize the certain areas and, and get after it. Yeah, I think it's more private. you got so much to do, I understand that but maybe prioritizing the 90 and get maybe 30 done that are strategic would be advantageous. Thanks. Okay. All right, uh, review of accounts payable. So a lot of bills for mutual aid. Do we know, do we know what that total is yet or are they still coming? There, I believe there's Two or three we're waiting on yet, and we're expecting the total of all of them to be right in the neighborhood of a million dollars. That's just the labor piece of the program. Right? Is that on top of the 2.6 that I heard about before? Or closer, closer, closer to it. Probably closer yeah. to it. About two million, I think, is what we're saying the total cost of the was at this point in time. But that's part that, of that all said and done, yeah. And does that include the, um, the amount that we signed back from insurance? Is that, that, that inclusive was, of that? That was. Part of it, yeah. Okay. As you can see, that three hundred sixty-eight thousand is an all lot. Right. <laughs> right. 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 Well, and I should ask too. So, did did we end up? I saw on Facebook that uh, we had a crew ready to go. For the hurricane, <coughs> I don't know whether that was they called it off. Okay, um, Monday, I believe. Mm -hmm. Okay, we were supposed to help Florida, and as you saw, most of the storm missed Florida. So yeah, hit Alabama. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. So we uh, were on call for a few days, and then they told us to stand down. Okay.
Uh, Any other uh, comments? Yeah, just just one too about um, you know looking at all the all the charges to it. So you have the catastrophe that was the storm, but then you think too about um, you hate to say this, but the, the economic uh, the economic impact of the area. You know the amount of food that had to be purchased locally and everything to feed all the crews and everything. And then you look at the the um, putting them up in hotels or motels and everything like that. So you have the, the storm damage, but then you have the economic uh, impact as well. True. True. We actually had great difficulty a few nights finding enough rooms just because the ski show was going on one weekend and then they had the BMX race the next. So hotels were kind of at their capacity already. So well, a couple times we had to have them stay in flow over. Anything else? If not, does somebody like to make a motion to adjourn? So I'll second it. Okay, no agreement, please say aye. Aye. Thanks.